skip. Uh, working on getting attendance taken of those who are online with us this morning. So we have note of that to reference. And uh, so good morning to all of you online. Good morning to those of you who I have missed on in person as you've meandered in this morning. Uh, it's a little bit different to do this in person than sitting in front of the computer and doing that in one place. So Charlene. Good morning, folks. Good morning. It's good to see you all and be here together again in person and virtually. Um, those of you, my iPad is over here and that's my friends on, on the Zoom call. So, or all of our friends on the Zoom call. So uh, they are waving. Uh, I know you can't see them necessarily, but uh, there is a good little crowd. Uh, and there is, let me see if I can flip you all around. Wave everybody here. I know you guys on the on the internet Zoom, you can't be seen, but we, we you can see the folks who are with us this morning via camera. Try to get this back now. Okay, so good morning to everybody again. Uh, as we continue in this new thing of getting one step closer to whatever our new normal is, I want to remind you just a few things. I know we're back in the sanctuary, but even back in the sanctuary, we ask that you continue to mask and continue to practice social distancing as we should be doing as a way of protecting our neighbors as, as we continue to get vaccinated throughout. I know some of you question whether or not I should or should not be masked. The reason I continue to mask is not all of us in this space have been vaccinated. In the, in the guidance that I am receiving from Henry Ford, medical professionals at Henry Ford, is that I should continue to be masking as a speaker. Yes, I know some of you are far in the back of the sanctuary. We're more than six or eight feet apart from one another and I have plexiglass, but the guidance that I am receiving from medical experts who work in world and public health is that we should continue to be masking as leaders, as people who are speaking and interacting with one another until we get more people vaccinated. It's just the best thing to do for all of us. So that is why we continue to do it. That is why we are not singing in the sanctuary. If you are somebody who is longing and missing the singing, I'm sorry, I know it's hard. I have to catch myself and I'm, I find myself humming um, instead of singing, at least that contains some of the vapors within the mask, but uh, I find myself having to catch myself doing that. And my singing I end up doing is around my house in the morning. Uh, I have a little playlist that I play on my phone while I walk around here and get ready. And so I prepare myself in that way. I know it's different. We're gonna work towards whatever new normal is and when it is safe to do so, according to the CDC, according to health officials, we will reintroduce singing as that time allows. But for the time being, we're gonna take advantage of this space and try our best to make everybody feel comfortable in this space because we all have varying comfort levels here. Um, that is the, the word of note. So. Please continue to keep that in mind as we worship together in person. Uh, and as general announcements, folks, like there's a lot going on in the life of our church and that's a great thing that we have figured out how to do ministry in a new way in this time. 
in the last 12 months that have seemed so unreal to so many of us, to all of us at different points in time, we have figured out how to do ministry, even though all of the stuff has happened in the last year. And so as we celebrate 175 years of ministry this year, we are kicking up our involvement with missions and ministries in the community one of the ways is which we are doing that is collecting items for the red basket red wagon food basket that's a mouthful to say the food baskets that we do in thanksgiving and at christmas time we're collecting this month peanut butter large creamy peanut butter grape jelly and strawberry jelly or jam whichever you prefer to purchase we will find a use for bring those items in uh, and you can connect with melissa during her office hours or bring them with you to worship uh, mon um, on Sunday mornings if you're choosing to worship in person. Um, we're also collecting this month uh, for St. Agnes Food Pantry pancakes and syrup uh, to help cover their needs right now and help prepare them through uh, Easter for their clients there. We Next month, one of the ways in which we'll be blessing the community is connecting with our nursing homes in the community, both Barton Woods and um, why the other one cannot stay in my brain the last two days. Help me out. Barton Stonecrest, that's the other one. The two um, nursing homes in our community will be blessing with things like um, TV tray table uh, puzzles. Think little puzzles, maybe 100 pieces, 5 by 7, 8 by 10s that can fit on TV trays that people can do in their rooms. We're collecting crossword puzzles. We're cross collecting word searches, uh, different things like that that could cheer up those in the nursing home. Today, I don't know if those of you who are you're online, you can see that on the altar table, we have shamrocks that are gonna, we're going to bless. And actually, we'll do that here in just a moment to start our worship off together. We will bless them together. They will be going to all of our medical facilities in Freeland. What a wonderful way to spread some cheer, right? Yeah, you guys can give me a little bit of feedback here. <laughs> Let me know you're awake. Yes, thank you. I know you guys are all clapping and yeah, you're with me here too. So it's different to be on this side of things with masks and not being able to see your faces. So a little bit of movement helps me to make sure that you're still awake, one, always, um, and that you're engaged with me in a little bit different way. I know you guys have all been great and you've been wonderful at keeping engaged via, by unmuting and muting, but as we are together in this new space, that becomes a little more challenging. Uh, so continue to think about those opportunities. For those of you who have email, you can have that list. That list is available to you in the email that I sent last night of the things that we're collecting. Um, Heidi and Della will be taking the shamrocks along with Della's grandkids uh, to deliver them to the medical facility. So those will get distributed this week as a blessing to them. Um, reminder, Bible study tomorrow night, chapter four. I believe is where we're at uh, in the walk. If you're interested in what that book is all about, there's still one copy on the table just outside the, the doors of the sanctuary. Uh, so you're invited to take that if you wish. Church Council, if you're somebody who serves on any of our ministries uh, in, as a chair or are sending a delegate. We have a Tuesday night meeting on Zoom. Uh, we will continue to meet on Zoom until more of our folks get vaccinated in that space as well to enable us to be able to hear one another a little bit better and, and communicate a little bit better that way. Uh, one of the things that we are looking for, the trustees are up to a lot of projects this year, uh, and we're looking for people, those among the congregation who have particular gifts or things that you are, you like to be handy at, or you are handy at. Um, it's probably typically more men, if I had to guess, you're looking at Greg here, uh, without gender typing or stereotyping at all. We're looking for people who have skill sets of plumbing or electrical or general handiwork. If you have one of those gifts, let me know, let Melissa know so that we can create a list to share 
with the con with the trustees and other aspects. Uh, even if you're somebody who loves to sew, share that. There are lots of ways that we can engage one another in mission and ministry here and now in this community and beyond. Uh, so please get that information to me. And also, if you are um, if you haven't gotten your emergency contact information to Melissa. That is something we are looking for. And what I mean by emergency contact information is we are looking for ways to remain in connection with you if there is an emergency, which means maybe having a kid of yours that I can be in touch with if an emergency occurs and you become in a, in a place where you're not able to communicate anymore. I'm, that's helpful for me uh, as your pastor to remain in connection with you and your family. So if you could get that information to Melissa, as well that's oftentimes it's another kid uh, or a spouse if you're still uh, if you still have a spouse but i found especially in the last 12 months those of you who are widows or widowers uh, that this has been a challenge particularly to be remain in connection if you don't answer your phone and check your voicemails uh, it's helpful so i will share that information only with future clergy whenever that time comes uh, but it will stay with me in, in those roles as well so that we have ways to be in connection with you. So please do that. Uh, those are the announcements that I have to share with you all, friends. People gathered around Jesus as his reputation becomes known from town to town. As we gather virtually and in person, we too are yearning for presence, for peace, and for help. We continue our Lenten season of recovery as we focus on health as essential to our spiritual lives. As we continue in worship this morning, let us uh, watch the video that is getting shared and played right now. our ability to stay creative. The picture of our lives is dulled and hope for a brighter future can fade. We need a touch of inspiration to awaken us from our sleep as we hear in one of this week's healing stories. We also awaken to our agency to seek out the divine healer, reaching out to touch the power we know can restore our intellect and imagination. We emerge ready to re-engage with the world, seeking and seeing solutions, creating different pictures of life, renewed just as a mosaic artist creates beauty from broken pieces of glass. Vessels, holy and holy. open their lives to Jesus, we are drawn to the healer, opening our hearts with honesty about our lives and finding assurance that offers peace. Let us acknowledge our need to restore, repair, renew our holy vessels so that we might be able to create and imagine new possibilities, new solutions. Let us pray. God of all possibilities, made in your image, you have tasked us as co-creators of a better world. You bestowed imagination and the ability to learn and progress, but we are tired. 
Our energy wanes and enthusiasm wanes. The call for ideas, solutions, workarounds, and adaptations have become nonstop for us. Whether we are needing to find ways to keep children engaged and well, or figuring out how to maintain a passion for our work in the midst of trying times, or needing desperately to undo systems of oppression too long affecting our lives and the lives of our neighbors. Not only our livelihoods, but our liveliness is at stake. Too often we want to give up, declare it all too hard and simply isolate, waiting out the time for better days. It all feels overwhelming and so we look away, sometimes even from the need in our own community. Help us, healer. Show us our energy reserves. Forgive our cynicism. Move us to move, one step at a time toward greater care for one another. In this silence today, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. I invite you to imagine a warmth beginning to arise within the core of your body, church. It may help you in this moment to keep your eyes closed. This warm orb of light is deep within you, a flame always there and ready whenever you need it. This warm glow begins to emerge from the recesses of your inner being to ignite and spark inspiration. It floods your whole body until your skin is glowing in it, radiating outward. This light from you offers a beacon for those around you whose own light reflects and multiplies of your own. There is now exponentially more radiance. Know this. We are gifted with agency to affect healing in the world, no matter what. We are not alone and we can join with others to magnify our collective hope. Christ will answer when we call, when we reach out for what we know, what we know can help for you, for me, and for all of us. Take a deep breath in to let this truth fill you. And breathe out with the relief of assurance. I invite you to imagine that the warmth that surrounds you is extending to those who may be next to you in close proximity. In this space, in your rooms at home, imagine it extending beyond your walls or these walls of the sanctuary to the neighborhood, to the wider community, beyond the walls of the church. 
maybe encompassing our entire church and all the communities within and around them. And seeing it spread like the rising sun, let it expand to all the world. Let this be our peace. Amen. If you've not already, rejoin me with your eyes open if you would. And I want you to know, know this truth, friends. The peace of Christ is with you. The peace of Christ is with us all. And as we continue in worship, Jean is going to play for us number 780 for those of you who are at home following along and singing in your, in your, screen, or in your homes together. Number 780, O oh love that will not let me go. People were fortified by Jesus' words and deeds that revealed care for all, especially those who are marginalized. And so we strengthen our belief in the possibility for renewed health and vigor for all of us, no matter our ages. Friends, before we continue any further in worship this morning, I invite you to pause, stop what you're doing, and just focus on your breathing. As you know, many of the, if you've been with us the last few weeks, we've had this, and we're going to continue to experience this time to pause and focus on our breathing each week as we gather together. When we inhale, we take in oxygen, which our bodies need. But when we breathe, something else happens, and we're reminded in Scripture of these words that we hear from in the book of Job, Job 33, verse 4. The Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. When we breathe, each breath is a spirit breath. It's the breath of God Almighty in our lungs. Our bodies need oxygen. We need that good stuff. And our souls need the breath of God, too, working to heal us from the inside out. It cannot be done on our own. We need that breath of God. And so let's start by taking in a deep breath. Nice, big, slow breath in through your nose and let it stay in your lungs as it fills your lungs for a couple of seconds. And then slowly sigh the breath out through your mouth. Let's do that a couple more times. Thank you. 
Sometimes, church, we need to play. We need to play. Mira, do you like to play? Do you like to play? What about you, Bradfield? Do you like to play? No, you don't? Yes? Yeah? What about rose bushes? I see you there. I see your names anyways. We like to play. Adults, do you like to play? Yes? I know, churches back there, you guys like to play too. Yeah, we like to play, don't we? I feel like as we get to be grown-ups, we lose that sense of fun when it comes to playing, don't we, sometimes? You know, I went on a treasure hunt this week in my house, and it reminded me that play brings joy. Play reminds us of the power of being in the moment, not worried about what's coming next, but playing joyfully in the moment where, we, where we're at. It could be a spirit-filled opportunity to see something not simply for what is, but what can be. Think back to when you were kids, big people. Think about the most fun play experience that you had. You got something in mind? Yeah? The best fun thing that you ever did. During hard times and then this past year that we have had, this past year that's been crazy hard and difficult. And we get stuck focusing on all that isn't right in the world and all that we don't have. Yeah, I know we don't have singing. I know that's hard. But we're able to gather together, together again and be with people and connect and gather in this sacred space that you have longed to return to. We can dwell on all of those, but we don't have all those limitations that we've never asked for personally. I know many of you have felt like the rug has been picked out up from underneath you this year. But it's a very real part of where we're at. And we get to choose how we deal with it. So we can choose to dwell on the negatives or we can look at the positives of the things that are back in place. God has placed an incredible power in us, a healing power, the power of creativity. Did you know that that goes all the way back to Genesis? This power of creativity? In the beginning, God, what? Created. Say that louder. In the beginning, God created. And God created man and woman. God created the sun and the star, the sun and the stars, the sand, the water. God created. Do you think God had fun doing all of that? I think that was kind of like a playtime for God. So what if we took on this action of playing and creativity in the same way? Big people, play looks different for us, doesn't it? Maybe play is playing cards with your friends when it's safe to do that again. Maybe it's going for a walk on the beach or in the woods or taking some sidewalk chalk and doing something in your neighborhood to spread some joy. You know, I went on this treasure hunt. Let's get back to that, Pastor. I went on a stuff safari this week. What is this? What is that, Mira? Oh, Bradfield, do you want to come get it? Come get it. What is that? You know, wander away. Helps if I have the microphone on. It's a paper towel roll. What can we do with that, Grayson? Come back here. Help me out. What can you do with that? What kind of things can you do with that? You don't know? What could it be? You could throw it out? <laughs> Recycle it. Think bigger. What else can you, what have you done with those types of things at school? You can look through it. So maybe you can make a kaleidoscope? Make a drum? You're already doing it. You're drumming on the chair, right? You can make, use it as a, as a drumstick. Let's see. What about this? What's this? Can you tell? Oven mitt. Good job, Keely. 
You know what? I, every time I put on my oven mitt, what I think of, this is not going to resonate for all you older people. So for that, I'm sorry. But every time I put on this blue oven mitt, you got it. <laughs> what is this? Mira, what is this? What is this? What is this song symbol? What is this symbol song? I'm singing it in my head. Baby shark. Doo -doo -doo. It reminds me of the baby shark song. Every time I put this on, I'm singing in my head. So it's not just an oven mitt. It's something I play with in the kitchen. You know, imagine pastor dancing in her kitchen, singing baby shark. It's a basket, it's a strainer for mac and cheese, right? So when your mom makes mac and cheese for you guys, all that noodles get dumped into this so the water comes out, right? Maybe if mom makes that kind of mac and cheese for you guys. <laughs> Did you say what else it could be? A hat, good job, it could be a hat, couldn't it? And if I have this hat on and I have this, A spoon, it's a mixer. What, oh, it's a sword. Good job. So I could use it like this as a sword. I could use it like this as a sword. Man, on guard, I could do this, right? Good. Before long, we're playing. We're having fun. We're using our imagination. I have all sorts of other things. You know, how many things have you made with paper clips in your life? You can make paper clip people. You could make butterflies out of these. Right? All the things. I have this other cool thing too. I don't know why I bought it one day, but I did. I don't remember now. <laughs> Greg, Greg can laugh at me. All the trustees go, what the heck, Pastor? But it's bendy. What else could this be? A snake? Could we put wheels on it to make it a car or a caterpillar? What else? A slinky? Kind of. Could be. You know what it kind of reminds me of is the dog on Toy Story, even though it's not a slinky. It's nice and long like the little hot dog on Toy Story, isn't it? Friends, think about things outside of the box like you did when you were a kid. Some of us have lost the ability to do that. That kind of creativity we need in this world because it brings a different sense of joy, a different sense of healing and fun and hope. We have it deep within us. Grayson, you can play with that. You can recycle it. You can throw it away, man. It's whatever. I actually grabbed it here at the church when I emptied the uh, paper towels earlier this morning. So, folks, consider that. Think outside of the box about all the things that we have. And I invite those of you young people that are with us, with permission of your parents, to go on a stuff safari of your own. Think about what things are getting thrown away that you could repurpose, that maybe you could have a puppet show with. Maybe big people, you just take the time and do that and have fun with some of the stuff instead of discarding it as it's no longer worthy. Think of... This makes me think of Jay and how crafty Jay Reisinger is with the things that she has at the store of repurposing and making beauty out of things that we discard. The possibilities are endless. Let us create. Let us play. Let us never get too old for this stuff. Because God never did. God continues to create in us and with us each day. Folks, and it's wonderfully reassuring to know that no matter what we're going through, we can always turn to that creating God, healing God in prayer. We can ask for God's help for ourselves or for others. And God, like any true healer, listens. God always hears our prayers. Will you pray with me? Get your hands ready because we're going to use them. Loving God, we come to you with hearts, with hands, minds, and souls in need of your healing touch. Heal us from the inside out. 
so that we, all of us, may reach out to the world and help heal your world. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As we have heard from differing contemporary voices in our world, we hear from more again. And I'm going to do my best on the, on the names of these to give them proper credit, but they are more challenging to say today than they have been in weeks prior. Antion de Saint Exuper says, a single event can awaken within us a stranger totally unknown to us. To live is to simply be born. P.D. Auspensky. When one realizes one is asleep, at that moment one is already half awake. The authentic self is the soul made visible. It's anonymous. I don't know who that is. Dr. T.P. Chia says, Get out of your comfort zone. Wake up the sleeping giant within you. Another anonymous quote, curiosity is the first step down the path of awakening. Albert Schweitzer said, the path of awakening is not about becoming who you are. Rather, it is about unbecoming who you are not. The scripture today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9. And unlike what I put in the, in the email last night, we're going to start at verse 14. I'm going to grab a drink first while you get there. So Matthew, chapter 9, verses 14 through 26. Hear these words. Then the disciples of John came to him saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, The wedding guests cannot mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them, can they? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast. No one sews a piece of untruck cloth on an old cloak. For the patch pulls away from the cloak, and worse, a worse tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wineskins. Otherwise, the skins burst, and the wine is spilled, and the skins are destroyed. But the new wine is put into fresh wineskins, and so both are preserved. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader of the synagogue came in and knelt before him, saying, My daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her, and she will live. And Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples. Then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe on his cloak. For she said to him, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And instantly the woman was made well. When Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, go away for the girl is not dead, but is sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put in outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl got up. And the report of this spread throughout that district. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God in us, and for the word of God around us, we say, thanks be to God. Friends, this past week has been flooded with pictures reminding me of where I was a year ago. Many of you know, might remember that my last Sunday in person was you, with you was not the Sunday before we sh shut down. It was two Sundays before on March 1st when I was preparing to go to Israel. 
And I remember walking in the fellowship hall for that, my last coffee hour with you all. And I remember people saying to me, you better be careful. Maybe you shouldn't be going. It isn't safe. And I replay those roles and all of those conversations that people shared with me over the course of those moments in the weeks leading up to it as we were starting to learn just a fraction of what we know today about this illness, right? It's amazing how far we've come in this year. You know, and I left that space reassuring you that the Clorox wipes were in, in, tucked away in my bag, that we would be sanitizing those seats down. I remember uh, having a flashback from three years ago when my roommate was always using the Thieves Scent oil. For those of you who are oil diffuser people, Thieves gets in my head and it make, gives me a headache. Uh, and a person behind me who was a part of my trip was spraying her whole seat down and everybody down along with her. It was such a unique experience to hop on that plane a year ago. But I wasn't concerned. I think that trip to Newark on the way to get ready for the next flight the next morning was the day that I started to realize how many Asians wore masks on planes. Something that had always existed before, but even more so this time. And how in those moments of as the news was spreading, as we were hearing all that we were on our news media, how uncomfortable that made me around those other people. As we landed and began our tours, the first few days were as to be expected. We were jet lagged and groggy. There was beautiful green grass that we didn't see in Michigan at that point last year, right? We still aren't experiencing it just yet. The weather was beautiful, the sun was out, the skies were blue, and they were, there were holy experiences as we walked along that journey. Some with places that I had already visited in 2017 when I was there with my seminary class. Some locations were new, like the cliffs of our bell that we walked where theoretically Jesus would have walked to overlook the Galilee region. A beautiful scene. Everything seemed okay in those moments. I remember getting on the bus after one of the sites and I was sitting in the front because they get carsick. And so I sat near the front and right behind the tour guide and she turned to the other pastor that was the other leader of the group and said, we need to modify our schedule. Palestine has closed its borders. They are not letting people in, which also impacts not just Palestine, but Jericho, which was on our sight list for the next day. We had to quickly shift our itinerary for the remainder of our trip together. As our tour guide Tal would have had to put in extra hours as well to reimagine and rework what she had already done so that we could still make the most of our experience in very tangible ways. As the days evolved, less and less people were at these sites. The masks became more popular. There were lots of blue faces running around the streets of Jerusalem. And yet it wasn't until close to one of our last days, where we were walking the streets of Jerusalem, walking the Via Della Rosa, that path that Jesus took in his final days. It wasn't until there was a little boy who walked past our group ooh, like this. As soon as he passed us, the elbow went down. That was the moment that the light bulb went on for me. That we are in strange times that we have never been in before. It got real. And yet, 
made me feel like I was somebody who was foreign. What an unbelievable experience and memory that still like gives me all sorts of feelings in my core to think back to that moment because he dropped his arm and hightailed it past us as soon as he could. The fear that he would get something from us has put a lot into context for me. In the course of the last 12 months, as we have made change, choice after choice, of decision after decision about how to keep people safe in the sanctuary as a church, choices that leaders have had to make across the board, that teachers have had to adapt to, that medical professionals have had to face day in and day out as business owners have had to quickly adapt, right, Barry? and wrestle with the fact that they aren't able to do things the way that they used to do. None of us, we're all in this together. Interesting to experience the Via Della Rosa, which was packed four years ago now, to 50 to 75% less packed. It was almost vacant in comparison to being shoulder to shoulder in 2017. And even then, with that much of the space being more open, our tour guide was taking us on back streets so that we would minimize even further. Because there were other groups that should have been out of the country that she was identifying and saying they should not be here. And they are a bigger risk to us, so we are going to take an alternative path. As we came to the conclusion of our, or to concluded our trip that day, that week, those 10 days, she found out that she would be without work as a tour guide in Jerusalem and Israel. Her life has been totally altered. In those times since then, the world has continued to change and evolve rapidly. One day we hear one announcement from the CDC and the WHO, and the next day it changes a little bit, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day, we've been inundated with information. And some of us are fortunate enough to shut it off and walk away and not think about those things. But others have been a little more concerned about how we do this in safe and efficient ways. We became incredibly aware that we may have a hard time leaving Tel Aviv on that trip, unsure of what and who we might come in contact with. Folks, it was a really crazy, scary time for me. I got stuck in, I got stuck in Jerusalem in four years ago for a few extra days because they canceled our flight with zero warning. This time I was a little more afraid to be stuck in a foreign country with zero medical care in the midst of a pandemic that we were so unaware of and yet fully aware of. And I, I remember trying to figure out how I was gonna come home and preach to you all that Sunday. And as I landed and my friend picked me up, she wouldn't let me touch her. We rode in the car, we didn't really say anything to one another. As I got out of her car, she, we pulled my luggage out of my car. I handed her the thank you gifts that I had purchased for her and her family. And we departed ways. No touching, no hugging. Believe me, we're huggers. You know that about me. I'm a hugger, I'm a toucher. And Megan is the same way and we didn't touch at all. And we hardly spoke. So as I began that trip home, I started getting phone calls from people, from some of you saying, maybe you shouldn't be preaching on Sunday, Pastor. Maybe you should come up with another plan. Little did I know that plan A, B, C, D, E was only just beginning. And so I scrambled, I asked Jay if she would fill the pulpit for me that following Sunday, which was, it was Thursday when I came home only for our bishop to say we need to put a pause on worship. Plan A, B, C, D, E. E was, 
we opted not to worship for a Sunday. And then we began online worship. It's crazy that we're at a year. What a roller coaster. What a roller coaster. But we're here. Together in virtual and person again. So much has shifted this past year, friends. You know, I think the challenging thing about this so much has shifted is that we've always been able to control stuff, so we thought, right? So we thought, we always thought that we were in control. The last 12 months has proved that we are not in control. And that's something we still wrestle with each and every day. We've always been able to make sense of the world because we have the internet and our news people telling us all the truth. But we've learned to question some of the news stations. We've learned to question one another. And sometimes we've learned to question our own selves as we, as we have navigated through this. For what we started out as a two-week journey, then a three-week, four-week, six-week, six-month, 12-month journey, we're here. And our lives are different. More different than we had ever anticipated. In the past few weeks, I feel, and I hope that you are feeling some of this darkness of the last year lift a little bit. As vaccines get circulated and life is starting to feel like it's returning to whatever no the new normal is, we question some things. The thing that we don't question is this, new life is among us in the shape of a cute little baby girl who's making her voice known in the world, to new life being present in the tulips that are sprouting up from the ground, new life and being back together in the sanctuary. And yet I wonder, as we encounter this time of newness, which doesn't really feel like newness to some of us, I realize, because many of us feel like it's returning to normal, but it's a new normal. And as we encounter that, I am wondering, and I want you to wonder with me, in this time of newness, in this season of still being in a pandemic, it is not over. It is far from over at this point in time. In this time of being in this sanctuary, in new ways, what will emerge within us? Will we remain as we always have, or will we discover new life together in new ways of doing church, doing ministry? Friends, we've already discovered that we don't have to be in the sanctuary in this building to worship. What a revolutionary concept. It's not revolutionary. Let's, that's sarcasm. We don't have to be in this space because we make our sanctuaries wherever we go. Because God is with us wherever we go. That means y'all at home are worshiping in your own sanctuary just as much as we are worshiping in this sanctuary together with you. Will we experience this new time, this new life as a time of creativity and hope as we shift our minds to what is next? As we focus on the new ways that we can communicate and interact and impact the world, Many things have shifted this past year in our emotional, spiritual, and intellectual lives. We know things that we didn't fully realize before. Or maybe we did, but we didn't take it quite seriously. Things we took for granted when we had a sniffling nose. It didn't cause us to wonder if we should be hugging or shake people hugging one another or shaking hands with one another, did it? No, we, we still did that stuff. Now we have reasons to question if that's the best thing to do, or maybe in those moments we should be masked in the future. 
How will all of the things that we've learned in this past year impact the ministries of the church? What ministries may need to be paused in the months ahead? Yes, even as we come back. What things might we need to reevaluate? What ministries might emerge because our time and energy are spent on what the Holy Spirit is doing among us here and now in this new life space? Yes, it might be scary. But you know what? Great things happen in scary places sometimes because God is with us and the Holy Spirit empowers us to step out into those spaces with boldness. This morning text reminds us of the ways that Jesus heals and restores new life into beings who experience an illness or even death. In the text today, we encounter new life found in Jesus. We are empowered to take on a new perception of the world. In our view of the past year, as we have had to take a step away from our former vessels, our former way of doing life, ministry and worship, as we have done all of that to evaluate, reevaluate, and reevaluate again what is important, what is holy, what is sacred, what might God actually be calling us to. We have been poured out of our old wineskins and have become new wine that cannot return to the old vessels. We no longer know the world as we once did. It has changed, and so it requires us to evaluate how we will live and worship differently. In the second part of this text today, Jesus is approached by a religious leader who interrupted the meal he was having where he was explaining this revelation that new wine cannot be placed into old wineskins. He is interrupted by this religious leader, somebody who would have been threatened by his work in ministry. In the process of the trip to see the man's daughter, Jesus is interrupted again by a woman who just wanted to touch his cloak. If I but touch his cloak, he will heal me. Within an instant, Jesus pauses and shares with the woman that her faith has made her well. Jesus then gets to the house and the people are already practicing what they would call sitting shiva with one another. The beginning of the mourning process of the communal Jewish mourning. Jesus enters the scene and people laugh when he tells them she is just sleeping or resting. Ha ha ha, she's been dead this whole time. He goes in and awakens her to new life, changing the view of those who were sitting Shiva in the next room to a time of not just celebrating the life that was, but the life that is and is to come, ready to be lived to its fullest. This past year, our lives have experienced many interruptions. Some could say that some of these interruptions have been divine interruptions. Have you caught the divinity? Have you experienced God in the midst of these divine interruptions? We needed the time to pause and evaluate where God was found in our lives, how faithfully we were in drawing near to our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer, and our healer. As you look back on this past year, church, How have you experienced this divine interruption? Were you able to tend to your spiritual life in a new way? Have you encountered the sanctuary outside the walls of this space here? Have you learned to love God more fully in your own personal devotional life? Have you learned to love your neighbor in a more deep and compassionate way. How have you emerged from this time as new wine? 
How will you keep yourself on this path of newness so that your new life and new hope can be placed into a new vessel to be shared with others, not just returning to the old, bubbling out of the cracks? How will you do that? It's not just about returning back to this in-person worship space. It's maintaining your spiritual rhythm with Jesus in your own daily patterns. And friends, we have the power to choose how we respond to this past year. It's the beautiful thing about free will that God gives us. In God's creativity, we get this free will to choose, the power to choose. Some of us had been sleeping prior to the past 12 months that we had been in. Comfortable with the ways that we've always done things, get set in a routine and rhythm. In the past 12 months, we've encountered all of us have encountered the world in a new way. We are being called, shaped, and formed into something new, even in this moment, friends. Will you embrace it and lean into this discomfort as we envision what might become of us in the weeks and months and years ahead as we celebrate 175 years of ministry? Can you embrace that with us? We are reminded not just in the wineskins that Jesus speaks of, but as spring emerges, the cycle of life is unending, bringing new life to each day. We've been pushed outside of our comfort zones this past year, and it is not ours to return to once what, what once was. It's not. Just as the caterpillar, think about this, just as the caterpillar can't return back to its cocoon, we can't return back to our cocoon of comfort either. We must evaluate and act upon how we might remain on this new path toward healing and reconciliation with Christ and with one another. That is the life that proclaims a testimony of new life and resurrection to the world. May it be so. Amen. People who were healed by Jesus were not afraid to ask, and so we come before the Holy One, making our petitions and desires known, trusting the work of the Spirit. I have some prayer requests to share with you. Again, a reminder, if you have a prayer request that you wish to share with me, I invite you to do so prior to the beginning of worship, either by email, by phone call on Saturday or Friday, Thursday throughout the week, please make me aware of those. God already knows. That's the beautiful thing. When we come together, God is with us. So I want to share with you those things that we continue to uplift together. This morning, Betty reminded me that Bob Dork has a surgery tomorrow, and so we lift both of them as they travel uh, down to U of M. Question, Saginaw, hmm? Ypsilanti, um, to Yipsy and uh, care for the doctors and healing for Bob along the journey. We want to continue to lift Elaine Delaney, who continues to wrestle with back pain. Um, those of you who, are, who have already stepped in and served her in a variety of capacities, thank you. She appreciates it and I appreciate it, knowing that you are reaching out and connecting with one another, caring for one another in difficult times. That's who we are called to be as the body of Christ. For those who continue to deal with COVID, fighting it, dispersing vaccines, those who are dealing with long-term effects, those who are in the hospitals and nursing homes, for those who are struggling with any form of substance abuse, for those with broken relationships, and for those who are mourning the loss of, lo loss of loved ones, and for those who are battling cancer actively or nearing the end of their life. As we hold these prayers and those that are unspoken among us, 
I invite you to direct your attention to the video that Bryson will play for us here in just a minute. In your love, make us whole. May we rest in your compassion. Calm the lost, weary soul. In the warmth of your love, may your peace fill our hearts. May we know of Jesus by your grace you console make us holy make us whole let us pray Healer of our, actually our malady of exhausted spirits, we come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recovery from the toxicities and grief of our time. You remind us that we do not have to shoulder everything alone. We give you thanks that we all must, all we must do is orient ourselves toward your divine spirit to accompany us, touch us, inspire us, and heal us. We pray especially for all who feel opportunity and possibility is cut off to them, whose spirit is continually dampened and damaged by those who fail to see value in their contributions, who steal away rights to the fullness of expression, we give thanks for communities, churches, nonprofits, and businesses that are supporting the flourishing of all voices, especially voices that have been silenced. We give thanks for the courage of innovators who use their resources and creativity to make more good in the world, making this a priority over profit. We ask for courage and encouragement to reevaluate how we as a church can join this effort now and into the future. God, we lift these things and all the things that re remain upon our hearts that we are not able to speak aloud today. God, hear our prayers, heal our brokenness, and transform our holy vessels, our lives into holy vessels ready to be filled and used by you. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In your love, make us whole. May we rest in your compassion. Calm the lost, weary soul. In the warmth of your love, may your peace fill our hearts. May we know us by your 
your grace you console make us holy make us whole prior to our in-person pause one of the things that we would do is cast these offering plates among ourselves right these plates would get passed before between you around you sometimes by kids sometimes by adults we would hand them out so that you could put your blessings in. And then we would sing the song, the doxology that has the words that say, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost is the source of all of our gifts. As you envision the offering plate being passed among you today, pause for this moment. Give thanks for the gifts that God blesses you with. The tangible and the blessings, all of the blessings abundant that come in new life and creativity as we emerge from our cocoons of the past year to become the people who God, people of God who proclaim how great our God is. Let us pray. God of all creation, healer of us all, we are thankful for all that you have given us, for the gifts that help us live in our daily lives to the new life that emerges when we are able to return a portion back to you. May we use the gifts you bless us with in ways that would honor and glorify you for the work of ministry in this church and in the world. It is in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. The parting words Jesus gave to those he healed were often as much as the balm as the healing act itself. We hear words of encouragement from the one who makes beauty from brokenness. Friends, I forgot to do this at the beginning of worship when I said I was going to and I didn't totally forget but now seems the appropriate time. As I look at these beautiful shamrocks, 24 of them shamrock plants that will go to the different medical buildings in our community. There are also cards that will get messages written in them to, to, that were made by Tina Castle uh, that will get handed to them as well. I want to invite those of you who are in building to reach your hands out. Like so, those of you online, be with us here in this building. Imagine this space that you are here and now staring at these. Let us pray. God, for the gifts that you have given us, thank you that we get to be a blessing to those in our community through these green and red and purplish shamrocks. God, may they bring a small amount of joy to these offices. May they brighten their day. Help them to smile and know that they are not alone in these challenging times that we continue to be in. God, may your love be known through this small gesture, through the work of this church. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, I know those of you who came in person may not have your glass in your hands or in your pockets, and that's okay. I can hold on to them. Last week, you were invited to put your glass into a bowl. Two weeks ago, into a bowl. Last week, with water. The words of Jesus we highlight this week from this healing story are, the girl is not dead, but is sleeping. We have touched today on our need to be rejuvenated in spirit, to awaken with new vigor for creativity and curiosity, to see things anew, this intellectual healing that is a spiritual healing. We may feel like we have been slowly dying away these last few months, but Jesus affirms that we're not dying. Perhaps we were just sleeping. It is the healing we yearn for to be awakened, brought back to life with vitality and vigor for the days ahead. 
And so this week, I invite you to take your glass in my hand and begin playing with it to create a different picture. I know you only have like three pieces each, but make a different arrangement with it than what you have had so you can look at it differently. If you have a flat surface to arrange it, or maybe you have different pieces that you can add into it as well to make a new transformation out of it. Take those broken pieces, move them around on a flat surface as a mosaic artist would try various configurations to create the beautiful picture that they would end up with for their piece of art. Even when the raw materials of our lives that we have to work with feel broken, we can get a new perspective that can awaken a new vision for life within us. When you've found an arrangement that works, I invite you to take a picture of it. Put it someplace where you'll remember it or put it out on your countertop so you can be reminded of it daily. If you have the technology to take a picture of it and make it your backdrop of your phone, I invite you to do that so you're reminded each day that we are capable of reworking, remaking the pictures of what life can be. Again, if it's not a part of your technology or comfort zone, just put it someplace where you can be reminded of those things and use it as a focal point for your time of prayer. Scriptural accounts of healing often end with responses from the crowd of witnesses. How will we proceed into the brokenness of this world and respond as the body of Christ? You've, given, you've been given plenty of ways to consider responding today. And so as we continue to ponder that, I would invite you to hear the song from Jean, Be Thou My Vision, number 451. And I've missed hearing you play live. <laughs> what a gift. Each week we look at the reaction of the crowd and the healing story that we read. This week is an interesting reaction to Jesus' notion that the girl was not dead. Hmm. And they laughed. Full-blown funeral rites had already begun, flutes and all. And yet Jesus said, this is not the end of the story. The idea that we could come back into life better than before, that we could find some way to bring life back into what feels dead, may seem preposterous to some at this point, laughable. But Jesus, but like Jesus, we need not be deterred. Can we forge ahead, church? 
in, can enter into the house of sorrow and dare to pro proclaim that can still exist. And so in our communal discerning about how this church community can become a health hub through our ministry and mission, let us put our minds to imagining how we can learn about innovative ways that are being created to revive our communities. Who are the bright spots of life among us, among our civic, political, neighborhood, organizing leaders that are working passionately to alleviate the devastating effects of this pandemic? that have raged around among us. I invite you to explore what all those possibilities are and how we or you might partner with them as we work toward a new or renewed commitment and contribution to our community to recover from this past year. Now go with confidence that we will awaken. We will seek out and reach for healing solutions that our neighbors, our communities, and our world needs, recovering our depth of love for all and our, all our joy of living and loving in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears. You are not dead. You are sleeping. And may the Spirit hover, move, and deliver salve to your soul and a spring in your step. Amen. Amen. We have one more video, and then Jean will play some more tunes for us as we depart from this place. this place, dear friends, and experience the love and joy of creativity when you take your trash and play with it a little, because God creates infinite possibilities for us all. Amen? Amen. See y'all next week in some capacity. Good to see you, those online.